You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Life cycle is a series of stages through which an individual, culture, or manufactured product passes through within its lifetime. Welcome to the Life Cycle Radio Show with your host, Pastor Ken Jones. Ken is here to help you through trauma, self care, being overwhelmed, and coping with your life cycle issues. So now, please welcome the host of Life Cycle, Pastor Kenneth Jones. Coming to you live from the BVM Network and Tuned In Radio, this is Life Cycle, and I'm your host, Pastor Ken Jones, and as always, looking forward to connecting with you and sharing with you as we talk about the things that will impact your total well-being, spirit, soul, and body. Well, today is an interesting topic. Of course, I say that almost every week, but uh, if we been going through the pandemic and uh, in the last couple of years you've been seeing a lot of things taking place in our society you've been seeing riots you've been seeing buildings burn down you've been seeing the impact of the uh the pandemic you you've been seeing a lot of anger and, and bitterness and rioting and and people pointing fingers and all different types of things that are happening in our society people talk about hate people talk about systemic racism, people talk about reconciliation, and all these things, critical race theory, and all these things that you are hearing today, but in the midst of though, all the shouting and the screaming by our politicians and special interest group, there are people in our community that are, to me, I, I would say, being neglected. It's like fighting over the bone, like two dogs fighting over the bone, and I didn't realize uh, the bone is probably, you know, deteriorated by now. But when I say this, I'm talking about uh, the, the people that are most impacted by what things that are going on in our society, in our society, and that's the urban community, especially minorities in our, in our urban community. And as Christians, uh, we're also seeing a division within the church because, uh, you know, African Americans want white people to, to be honest, they want reconciliation, and, uh, they want everybody understand that they're going through things and other minority groups now are standing up we're seeing the Asians being uh, being targeted and so a lot of things are happening and so how does this pans out for us as we trying to teach you know biblical principles and godly principles uh, the gospel was meant to unite people and bring people together but now it seems like it's dividing people so I have someone on my show uh, today, Jonathan Marsh, and Jonathan Marsh kind of grew up in the uh, suburbs. I mean, I don't know about suburbs, but uh, maybe the urban community in New York. And so he's been. We've been talking, and he's been wanting to share some things, to speak out on some things, to, to kind of say, "Hey, uh, in the midst of all this shouting and, and screaming and yelling and disagreement, there's a there are people, lives in the balance." And one of the things they need to hear is a message of hope. But is the gospel being preached in our urban community today? And yeah, is it not only being preached, is it being lived out? So that's what we're going to talk about today and to give it, you know, give it the time that it says. So, uh, Jonathan, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Are so you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. So you heard my monologue already. Uh, you know, am I really? And do you think I'm really off base on uh, what I'm talking about? Uh, no, there are, there's some serious problems in 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 our in our communities as far as the church. Um, uh, 
a lot of people have had really, really bad experiences uh -huh. with churches in the past, and they've uh, they've begun to shun themselves from it, from bad me from bad messages uh, to to the lies that are being told. Uh, some of the people in the church they feel are hypocrites. Um, they feel no need to be in church to worship God because they feel that God is within inside of you and you can worship God in your own home without uh, all, all, all the lies and the stuff that goes on in some of the churches. Well, you, you say lies and things that go on, deception, although the Bible does talk about that. You make it sound like ministers now are like the carpetbaggers of the Reconstruction area. Is that, is that, what, you, is well, that not, what you're trying to say? No. I, well, some of them are. Not everyone. Uh, uh, you know, some churches that I've went to, I've, I've seen a lot of things. I've seen the pastor get up and, uh, you know, speak, speak. You want to be more like Jesus. You want to walk like Jesus. Uh, uh, you want to come up and do this, that. And you want to be upright with God and then turn around and he's on the corner shoot dice. Or he's covered in thy neighbor's wife or, you know. Wow. We, we, I've seen things like this. I've seen this happen. I've seen this personally. So what does that do? You know? I mean, so so John, what does that do for us? I mean, uh, in a mess, in a time, such a time like this that we're going through right now, we need to be sure that the message that's being presented to us in the church is a message of hope. I mean, people, the families are dependent upon it. The fathers and and the mothers and the children. Uh, not only are they, you know, they they're seeing so much. You know, we got so much fake news in our culture today that they need to hear these words of hope and words of peace. Uh, you know, how important is that? Uh, it dropped out for a second. Um, it's very. We re we 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 reattach ourselves to the gospel and to the church. Uh, I was raised in church. Um, I was raised in the church, and uh, until about the age of seventeen, I, I was I was really 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 into church, and uh, I had some bad experiences, so I decided to leave. Um. But, you know, uh, uh, life is, has its own learning lessons and through trials and tribulations and foxhole prayers, I found myself back in church seeking God. So it's very important that we reattach ourselves to the gospel. So, uh, Jonathan, when you sit down and watch TV and you see that uh, people in the church and leaders today are preaching uh, a gospel, or they're arguing, and uh, they're espousing hate, even from the Pope. And I'm not just talking about, uh, you know, I'm not even talking about white people. I'm just talking about even in uh, urban African American churches, uh, and you see so much influence, negative influence coming from the people that we put our trust in. Uh, how is this impacting our community today? Well, when you put your trust in somebody, you you're when you when you put your trust in somebody, you're 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 trusting and hoping that they're going to do the right thing. Not everyone does the right thing, and when you say something, and people take you at your word and you don't do it, well, that affects the whole. You know, uh, 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 we're looking up to you to lead us somewhere, and do you take us out in the street and and walk off and leave us? You know, but dead. So it, mm. it, it hurts the whole. Wow. I mean, that's a pretty dismal kind of image when we start thinking about, you know, church and uh, and our community church. Because I grew up in a rural, rural America, and I know it may not have been as like, you know, I grew up in poor rural America, too, in the South. So, you know, it was important. The church life was a, important. It was a way that we solve issues. It's the way that we found our identity. It's the way that we uh, established guidelines for, you know, behavior. So even growing up in a rural, rural South, you know, even in poverty, the church was a, uh, it's kind of like, I think it was like James, like James Baldwin, go tell on the mountain. It was kind of like a mainstay of our community. If, if everything else goes wrong, at least that was the church. But I'm finding myself not today, not so much 
looking to the church as much as I used to. Because, and then I'm a minister. I'm a pastor. And uh, so because there's just so many competing interests out there now, more than ever before. And, and many of those things are not gospel related. Uh, can you attest to that? Uh, yeah, I, the church is really needed. I, I think the church is needed, and uh, I think yeah. the church is needed. And uh, we, 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 you know, um, the neighborhood I grew up in, and, and where I grew up at, the church was really needed. The church did a lot more back yeah. then. You had you had churches that did a whole lot more, but then you also had churches that that took uh-huh. from the people and hurt the people. You well, let's talk I mean? about, so, yeah, and let's talk about that in our next segment there. Uh, the line is open if you'd like to call in with questions or make a comment. Our phone number here is one eight six six four five one one four five one. I'm Pastor Ken Jones, broadcasting to you live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Please stay tuned. More to come. Dr. R.C. will share extraordinary resources and services that promote educational success as well as making a difference in the lives of all social workers as well as the lives of children, adolescents, and teens of today. She will have open discussions addressing many of the issues that we face about our youth and how being employed in the uniquely skilled profession of social work for over 18 years has taught invaluable lessons through her personal experiences. She will also provide real-life facts, examples, and personal stories that will confirm that why serving as a child advocate is extremely beneficial when addressing the needs of the whole child. Listen live Saturdays, 10 a.m. Eastern on the BBM Global Network and tune in radio as Dr. R.C. will provide thought-provoking information that will empower, encourage, and strengthen students, families, and communities across our nation. You can also visit her at soarwithkatie.com. Have you ever felt like no one is listening or you're not getting the honest attention you deserve? Do you even know the kind of attention you want or need? You are not alone. Alice Aspen March is here to help. Thanks to Alice, through her epiphany and research over the word attention, there are solutions to the attention dilemma. Worldwide audiences have been enthralled and engaged for over 40 years with her visionary and pioneering observations. The kind of attention we get and give is vital to improving our lives and society. Alice and her weekly guests review game-changing insights for transforming and improving our understanding of attention, providing techniques for creating healthier and empowering behavior. Get a new perspective on a mainstream word. Tune into Why Our Attention Matters for fresh and thought-provoking conversations every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern on BoldBraveMedia.com and the TuneIn Radio app. I'm Pastor Ken Jones, and this is Life Cycle, coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. And today I'm talking with my guest, Jonathan Marsh, and we're talking about uh, the church and the issue of the gospel and, and whether or not the gospel is still being effective in uh, today's urban communities, especially in the midst of all that we're going through. So, uh, uh, jo- uh, Jonathan, uh, Jonathan are, you here? are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Okay, yeah. I want you to take a moment to share a little bit about yourself and your life and how, how the gospel has impacted you and what have you learned over the past few years. Uh, how the gospel has affected me. Well, uh, I'll take you back. I was a, a rapper as a teenager. When I decided to leave the church, I, uh, I went out into the street and... Uh, you know, I, I I found the five percent nation and other small gangs and things of that nature, which began to take control of my life. Um, my mother constantly, constantly screaming at me, praying for me. My aunts and my mother and I believe through their prayers. This is why I'm still here today. Uh, 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 winding up in jail for assorted things of that nature. You know. Uh, it was drugs, uh, jails, institution, and death. And um, you, I would find myself in those places clinging to God because that's all I had in there. You go to jail by yourself. 
And uh, you can either become addicted to the mayhem in, in jail or you can free your mind and find something until they free you from that place. And uh, that's where I, 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 I reattached myself with God, you know, because it's, that's, that's an ungodly place. And if you don't have God in a place like that, you have nothing. Mm. And uh, I found myself, I found myself reaching out for something greater than me that could not only free my mind, but free my body, my, you know, my physical mm -hmm. from the mental enslavement that the streets had put upon me. Wow. Did the street have, did the street have a gospel? street does have a gospel if uh if you're not going to church or if you're not reading the gospel the streets will find you and the streets will talk to you mm. and what kind of what kind of gospel is that you may find in the street i mean you know the gospel well, peace is peace and acceptance so well you have a lot of fatherless sons out there in the street mm -hmm. and uh and, uh, you know, uh, no one to teach them how to be a man. Well, there are people in the street and things in the street because the street, the street's almost alive on its own. On its own. Uh, you will succumb to these things and it will teach you and steer you in directions that weren't, that you weren't meant to go into. Uh, you can become a drug dealer and wind up an addict. You know, uh, uh, black people don't make guns. Well, we don't make guns. I don't. I don't bring guns into the country. You can wind up doing things with guns. You know, there's a lot of gun violence in our neighborhoods. Uh, I think this is all through indoctrination. Um, I believe. Uh, I believe a lot of that came from like, you know, from way way back to slavery. I believe, you know, it was brother against brother. You had to keep the black man against each other. Uh, you, you had to have him fighting his brother in order to control him. And uh, once the black man was broken, you know, if you break him hard enough, this thing will continue perpetually. You know, it will continue. It will just continue on. And it's it's a control system. If If, if I got... If you have me and my brother fighting against each other, you wouldn't have to worry about me. And so this thing has been perpetuated in the streets. Mm -hmm. We go after each other because this is what the streets have taught us, that I, I got to be king. You know, I got to be king of this hill. And if I can't be king of this hill, well, then I'll destroy everything around me. And and, and that's what the street tells you, you know. Uh, 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 it's a shame that that this is this is what's going on, and this is some of the things that we as black men need to address. We we, we need to find each other again and and, and, and unite, and maybe re-educate ourselves. Definitely then, have to get back into the Bible. Yeah, because doesn't doesn't the Bible tells us how to live and how you know the Bible provides us with guidance for fathers and you know for guidance for principles for men and also how to be a spouse, how to be a wife, you know, even the children. And so, I mean, the Bible, a lot of times people look at the Bible, we, we try to make the Bible more cultural now, but the Bible is not cultural. God created us in his image and God created man and woman. It is man who has created the culture and use that now the culture to kind of uh, use it to maybe to dominate, uh, to uh, to explain everything in life, and so people are, are no longer clinging to the the principles outlined in the Bible, but they are uh, they are grabbing, you know, they're grabbing certain nuggets of information, you know, from that culture. And so I want to talk about this a little bit more in our next segment. The line is open. If you'd like to call in with questions or comment, we'd love to talk to you. Our number here is one eight six six. Four five one one four five one. I'm Pastor Ken Jones here with Jonathan Marsh, broadcasting to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Much more to come, so stay tuned. 
Mike Zorick, a three-time California state champion in Greco-Roman wrestling at 114 pounds. Mike, blind since birth, was born in Hartford, Connecticut. He was a six-time national placer, including two seconds, two-thirds, and two-fourths. He also won the veteran spokestyle wrestling twice at 152 pounds. In all these tournaments, he was the only blind competitor. Nancy Zorick, a creative spirit whose talents have taken her to the stage and into galleries and exhibitions in several states. Her father, a commercial artist who shared his instruments with his daughter and helped her fine-tune her natural abilities, influenced her decision to follow in his footsteps. Ms. Zorick has enjoyed a fruitful career doing what she loves. Listen Saturday mornings at 12 Eastern for The Nancy and Mike Show for heartwarming stories and interesting talk on the BBC. BBM Global Network. The opiate epidemic has reached crisis levels, and with so many families affected by addiction, opiate-related drug overdoses, and death, the time is now to have a real constructive conversation about addiction that could lead to better prevention, treatment, and recovery. Alan Charles, author and keynote speaker on drug abuse and prevention, presents The Alan Charles Show. Alan brings a message of hope, sharing his unbelievable story of surviving a 24-year addiction to cocaine and and highlights from his memoir, Walking Out the Other Side, an addict's journey from loneliness to life. His raw honesty and courageous heart breaks the stigma of addiction and offers a unique perspective into the mind of an addict. Join Alan each week as he brings his listeners to a true understanding of the grip of addiction. It is only with this understanding that we can begin to heal. The Alan Charles Show, Thursdays at 9 p.m. Eastern on the BBM Global Network. And we're back. This is Life Cycle, coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. And I'm Pastor Ken Jones. And today we're talking about uh, the influence and uh, the effectiveness of the gospel, especially in the urban minority com- communities. And I have with me Jonathan Marsh as my guest as we talk about this issue today. If you'd like to call in to make a comment or ask a question, our number here is 1 866 451 1451. Now, Jonathan, I'm going to read this statement. It was a statement made by Brad Braxton, and he was talking about the African-American church and and the black community. I'm going to read this. He said, in urban and suburban America, the up-and-coming trend in the mega black church with state-of-the-art classroom, administrative offices, banking facilities, and gymnasium, many of these mega churches have enough members to populate a small city. Many factors contribute to the groundswell of membership, but most of all is the resurgence of a more charismatic style of worship in the black church that has motivated most of the interest. It is a vibrant, exciting worship of the African-American tradition that has drawn people. Yet I'm concerned that congregations cultivate spiritual lives and not simply provide energizing worship, but, uh, you know, not, but, but, but basic truth. And I know you you said earlier a minute about some issues with the black black church and whether or not the Bible is weaponized. And I mean, we you know a lot of times we see our churches today it's almost like entertainment, and and now it's become more political than spiritual, uh, and even more social, you know, than gospel. Uh, you know, is that kind of what you see in the day? Is that some of the things that have you frustrated? Uh, well, I think, again, I think um, the Bible was used during slavery as a weapon. Uh, they wanted us to, you know, to be meek, uh, not to kill and do things of that nature while they did all of these things to us. So they gave us this book and told us to be more like God and that a Savior was coming to save us. Don't Don't try and save yourself. Somebody else is coming to save you. Okay. Uh, uh, so, I think it kept us in place where we should have, we should have freed ourselves from bondage. Um, there was definitely enough of us. There was more than enough of us to do that. But the fact that we adhered to the Bible and its teachings, we stayed in place. Uh, so I do believe it was weaponized against us. Um. As far as breaking those chains today, uh, 
I, I think re-education is key. You know, okay. A lot. Yeah, of, you... a, a lot of... Go ahead. No, when you say re-education, what are you talking about? I mean, yes, I, you know, there's people who say that the Bible is used as a, you know, weaponized and kind of control behavior. You know, they and now it's the same old problem. You know, just controlling what is taught and what you know the truth. The Bible itself, to me, is not the weapon of self. It's the the handler. The Bible always talk about those who handle it deceitfully are the most dangerous one. Well, well. That's the thing, you know. Uh, I, I I reached out and I talked with a few people, time and time again, and they they always come up with, well, how can God create people, and say we were all made in His image, then allow man to treat, conquer, and kill, and enslave people, without some type of relief. Uh, the black man has been mentally and physically in bondage for hundreds of years, uh, and you know you're praying for this, and my mother prayed, my grandmother prayed. My great grandmother prayed and all of that, and uh, no relief has came. Uh, uh, I, I, I believe some of the some of the fault, most of the fault, lies within us uh, uh, as a people. You know, uh-huh. lies within us uh, as a people. But you know, the indoctrination of that Willie Lynch letter and how to create a slave and how to put us up against each other. You know, we're so caught up in fighting each other uh, uh, and trying to do better than, than, than my brother next door instead of saying, hey, this is how I did this and this is how you can do it. I, in fact, I'm going to help you get to where you need to be. You know, instead of helping each other, we, we, we fight amongst ourselves so much that uh, re-education is key. We, we, we need to find each other. We need to, you know, find ourselves. But well, John, as you know, I grew up in the church, you know, and I had, you know, Reverend Paul Turner, and Reverend Paul Turner would take time to, to help teach me and help develop me and tell me about, you know, being a man and what it means to be responsible and taught me respect. And uh, those principles have carried me a long way. They're not just, you know, the Bible principles are not just geared toward one person. Yeah, people can take certain parts of the Bible and use it as a mechanism of control. They're always doing that. And I think well, what, the, what the author that I was reading about a minute ago, Braxton was saying is that have we gotten so much away from the you know really teaching these principles and we got more and more into an entertainment lifestyle and you know we got the you know four deacons they're talking about this church where four deacons acting like the temptation uh, rather than teaching truths you know, we're dealing with fraud of this community. We're dealing with uh, a lot of anger and strife. People are fighting over stimulus checks and uh, things like that. But the Bible has has principles within that that help us to learn how to manage our relationship uh, and to guide our behavior from a biblical standpoint, not from a cultural standpoint. Uh, well, yeah, people, people are looking at the, uh, you know, from my from my research in the community, uh, as I'm trying to get, you know, my family back in the church, and um, you know, a lot of them believe that it's a show, you uh-huh. know, that it, that that is a fraud, uh, um, you know, and and, and 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 I don't really know how to get around that because they've seen some things, you know. How how, how do you get around the mistakes that some of the people in front of you? front of you have done how do you get around it i mean you know you have to break that chain but how how do you how do you reach out and break that chain in the whole community yeah you know, that's the, that's the problem you know well, you know what go ahead go ahead no it's you know jesus teaches the bible said jesus came to to uh to help the oppressed the bible says and 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 to minister to those who are you know, heard and many of those that are going through things. But he also taught us, and he was teaching principles, even at the, uh, you know, the Sermon of the Mount, he was teaching us principles on how to live our life, to conduct our life with one another. Uh, so even in the midst of all the things that we may go into, the persecution, oppression, that we can still live, you know, good, godly, and perfect life. And like you said, you were saying a minute ago, uh, some people just look at it as being a show. That you know they're looking at the gospel being a show and not something to be real and tangible for their life. And I want to talk about that a little bit more in the next segment. Uh, like I said, the line is open, it's still open. If you want to call in and make a comment, 
Our number is 1-866-451-1451. I'm Pastor Ken Jones, broadcasting you live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Please stay tuned. Are you struggling to care for elderly parents or a spouse? Do you wonder if being a caregiver is making you sick? Are you worried about taking time off work to care for elderly parents and balance work, life, and caregiving? Has caregiving become exhausting and emotionally draining? Are you an aging adult who wants to remain independent, but you're not sure how? I'm Pamela D. Wilson. Join me for the Caring Generation radio show for caregivers and aging adults, Wednesday evenings, 6 Pacific, 7 Mountain, 8 Central, and 9 Eastern. Eastern, where I answer these questions and share tips for managing stress, family relationships, health, well-being, and more. Podcasts and transcripts of The Caring Generation are on my website, PamelaDWilson.com, plus my caregiving library, online caregiver support programs, and programs for corporations interested in supporting working caregivers. Help, hope, and support for caregivers is here on The Caring Generation and PamelaDWilson.com. Renaissance woman, trailblazer, maverick. Those are just some of the words to describe to Chandra Poulard, owner and CEO of House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC, a woman minority veteran owned entertainment company based in Washington, D.C. Ms. Poulard served 10 years honorably in the United States Navy and departed from active duty to pursue her dreams of becoming an entertainment mogul. House of Virgo Entertainment offers script writing, producing, directing, DJ services, editing, and more. They cater to businesses, corporations, college students, working professionals, aspiring artists and nonprofit organizations, and employ veterans of the armed forces. Tashandra Poulard is pioneering the way we view media and taking her brand global. Visit her at www.houseofvirgoentertainment.com or call 281-515-3740 and like her on Facebook at House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC. I'm Pastor Ken Jones, and this is Life Cycle, coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And today I'm talking here with Jonathan Marsh, and we talk about the effect of the gospel in, in today's minority urban communities, and even our rural community as well. If you'd like to call, call in and make a comment, our number here is 1-866-451-1451. You know, uh, Jonathan, if we look at it, matter of fact, this is past year, we look at the COVID issue. We see higher infection rates and death from disease in, in urban community. We see a lot of economic factors, you know, social ills that are magnified by this current global health crisis. We see kids not in school and uh, the dropout rate and uh, the school system uh, don't want to come back to teach our children. We see uh, disparities in response to treatment as well. And But yet, the only thing I'm hearing on, on the radio and, uh, and on the uh, TV and the media, I hear a lot of hate. But uh, is that, you know, the hate messages really the answer? I mean, I, I'm, I still like to return to the gospel and turn to the gospel, you know, for a sense of help help and a sense of hope and and like I said I know you said your mom was um, very deeply into the, the word of God so I mean what do you think about that and just in light of what I just shared with you well I, I think the message is lost the message is lost when when you see the messenger do other than what he's talking about you know uh, you want me to follow these things you want me to do these things and you're supposed to lead us, yet you're not doing what you're te- talking about. You know, it's like do as I say, but not as I do. Uh, Matthew 23, uh, 23 says, uh, uh, Woe to you teachers of law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You give a tenth of your spice. No, 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 that's not the one I want. Uh, uh I lost it. I'm sorry. Okay. No problem. I lost it. I lost my scripture. My phone is just <laughs> bouncing all over the place. No problem. My phone is bouncing all over the place. But uh, there it uh, is. I got it. Okay. I have it. I have it. I have it. I have it. 
Go okay. ahead. You can go. You can go forward. No, it sounds like what you're saying is that uh, you know the Bible talks about in Jeremiah the same thing. It says uh, people will be saying peace, peace when there is no peace, and so. I'm beginning to see more politicians show up in our churches than, than ministers. And uh, like I said, the Bible is not a cultural tool, but we're trying to make it a cultural uh, tool. And so we're trying to teach things from a cultural standpoint, point, but a lot of the things is from a cultural standpoint is not necessarily a biblical standpoint. Uh, the, the day is culture is full of different things that contradicts the Bible. Uh, there, there are different principles things that contradict the Bible, but I, I think the by, the church should be a place that we we can go that we can step away from the culture, we can step away from uh, you know, the hate, and we can step into a, a an atmosphere where we can hear you know the truth and be confident by the truth. Did you find your scripture? Uh, no, I didn't find it yet. My phone okay. is bouncing off off the wall. All I right. need to grab my computer. No problem. I'm, what I'm are you? trying to do the show, and, 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 and I'm trying to multitask on this phone, and it's not working. Yeah. Well, don't worry about multitask. What do you think about, you know, the day of the culture? I mean, are, are you seeing too much of the culture in the church rather than the truth in the church? Uh, Well, I, I you know what? I am seeing more, more of the culture in the church. I'm used to old school church. You know, I'm used to going in and having Sunday school. Then we had the praise and worship. A uh, uh, testimonial service, and then the preacher rains down some fire and brimstone, and uh, 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 and then you have the part where you can give yourself to Christ. Uh, now you almost have a rap show going on in the church. <laughs> uh, there, there, there are so many things going on. You know, it's like a minstrel show. They're just doing so many things, and hey, watch this and watch that, and it's like watch this hand, and the other hand is doing something different, totally different. So you know, uh, uh, I think church has gotten a little too out of hand as far as that on TV and all of that because the message is being lost. Right. The message is being lost with all the things they're doing. Well, that's a term called uh, ecclesiastical panatheism. In other words, they say as long as you do it in the church, it's okay. So you can do you can do anything you do. If you do it in the church, automatically they think it's okay. And I, you know, I think that could become a problem. Uh, you know, that was a situation where you know saw a woman twerking in church. Well, I mean, just because she's doing it in church does not necessarily mean it's okay. And I think it's sending a confusing message to our children because we're trying to teach them the gospel and say, "Look, love one another." I need you to to uh, the Bible says flee uh, bad association. The Bible talks about. Uh, you know, thinking about good thoughts and doing good to your neighbor. All these are uh, principles that if we adopt these things, could change the way we think, could change the way we behave, could even change our community. But are all these things being taught in our church today? Or are, are we giving too much to this social gospel? Oh, uh, we might, we might. Um, I think people are just confused conforming to the, to the times and so they're allowing a lot of nonsense in in order to have people come into the church uh, instead of going out recruiting the people to the church you know what I see uh, this this uh, this LGBTQ thing is, is a little crazy but people are allowing that to affect the churches you know, I don't know if I should say that on the radio, but I was raised that a man was a man and a woman was a woman. I believe it says that in the Bible also. And uh, oh, yeah. we're, we're allowing that to infect our churches, and it's infecting our children. Well, that's this, an aspect of culture. Our children. Huh? And, that, and that's, what you're, that's what I mean. It's an aspect of culture, not necessarily... Um, you know, and when you start saying culture, then always you start putting you know the man's thought into it. Uh, man feelings, you know, like you know, the statement it doesn't matter who you love. That's a that's a cultural man statement, and but no, but what you were taught was something different. And I uh, don't want to get into too many uh, you know issues like this today. But I think I really want to get to is like teaching fathers how to be fathers and mothers how to to be mothers and 
you know, when they said a man is in the, they say when a woman, the mother is in the church, uh, fifty-five percent of a family may be saved. But when the man is in the church, eighty-five percent of the family follows. And so, this is why the church is such an important aspect of community. And without, you know, without the church, but if you make it a social uh, justice platform, and you want to sit there and just talk about all the injustices of the world. You know, then I don't think I don't think we're getting there. Uh, you know, Jonathan. So, uh, if you'd like to call in once again, the line is open. Our number is eight six one eight six six four five one one four five one. I'm Pastor Ken Jones, broadcasting you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. So stay tuned. MJ Domit is the owner of Expect to be Empowered, a company whose specialty is empowering people to live their best life by following their heart and accepting themselves unconditionally. After studying and making personal changes, MJ now focuses on giving others tools for self-empowerment. She provides individual and group workshops for people who are physically, emotionally, and spiritually blocked. Inspired by her work at Expect to be Empowered, MJ authored the book Waves of Blue Light, Heal the Heart and Free the Soul with a company empowerment cards she is a spirit book of the year gold medal living now book award winner and her book is a number one amazon bestseller in spirituality and was a 2012 gold medal winner recognized as the living now spirit book of the year an inspirational speaker mj will show you how you can repurpose every area of your life your life did not just happen to you you chose it which means you can change it visit www.expecttobeempowered.com or call 866-264-8024 Global Glory. That's the work of Dr. Marina McLean, COO of Global Glory, whose calling is to serve God. A first generation British born Londoner of Jamaican descent, Dr. McLean inherited the hunger for the word from her father, who was a Bible teacher. Growing up, her home was filled with missionaries from the Caribbean islands and America, and she travels the world preaching the gospel. She has a Bachelor of Arts degree in theology and an honorary doctorate of divinity and Christian counseling from France. International Christian University. Dr. McLean is also a songwriter and recording artist, and her songs are written during summits and conferences in the presence of God. She's recorded three worship albums to date and is in ministry for 28 years alongside her husband, Dr. Rennie McLean, who shares her passion. Visit www.globalglory.org or on Facebook at Global Glory. Call 866 244 5679 and feel the glory. I'm Pastor Ken Jones, and this is Life Cycle, coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And today we are talking about uh, the effectiveness of the gospel, especially in our urban communities. If you'd like to call in, our number here is 1-866-451-1451. Uh, if you'd like to call, comment, or participate. I'm here with Jonathan Martin. Jonathan, you, you, I know you said about re-education of the black man. Well, I, I, I would be honest with you. I mean, that's a lot of black men that have been educated. We got a lot of scholars. We have a lot of, uh, and we, so when you talk about re-education of the black man, and 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 you're right, the, there are, you know there are, there are statistics that show uh, African American men they are suffering. But the other issue is, uh, if we talk about the gospel and, and the principles of the gospel, the, I, I think a lot of that begins, like I said, moving from uh, just from from hate and and misunderstanding, uh, and always got to put everything black. Just maybe go back to teaching biblical principles. I mean, so what are you saying when you're talking about the education of the black man? Well, uh, 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 when I was in the five percent, it would uh, uh, you went through student uh, uh, and, and, and you know uh, you had you had a few things that went along with it before that, and you had to learn knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, which which made you equal to any man out there, but it also unified you with your brother because. A alike, see alike, will be alike. Um, we kind of need to adhere to that structure because that will unify the black man. Also, we will be attuned 
on the same thing. We'll all be in accordance on the same thing, you know. This is the only way we're going to free our minds and free our people and strengthen our black men and reintegrate them into our black families. You, you know, we have to re-educate ourselves. We have to look at what's happened over the last 60 years or so to the black man. And we need to learn from that. We need to learn from that and we need to, you know, to re-educate ourselves and figure out how we can turn this thing around, do a nice 180, turn it around and become the head of the household again. Okay. You know? but now, but we, you know, like you said, we need to re-educate. I mean, what do we, what do we learn from the last six years? The, uh, the increase as an increase of fatherless homes in our minority urban uh, community, men are not staying in the home. Uh, there, um, you know, we, we're seeing you know that crazy increase in gang violence and everything else. All these things that people say that okay, it doesn't matter, especially when you look at the critical race theory. They say these things really doesn't matter because we're just an oppressed people. But the Bible, Jesus said, He came to minister to the oppressed, and so if those Bible principles can help us, you know, overcome oppression and teach us biblical principles and standards to make us better in our community and make us stand out in our community. Wouldn't that be the wouldn't that be a good place to start? Yeah, it would. I guess. I, I guess it, it, it would. Um, I don't know that some of us older ones are going to get it. So I, I, I think we should start at the next generation because it's going to take a while. Right. You know, but, but us older ones, we're going to have to stand in the trench. And say, if we can change, you definitely can change, you know? Right. You made a good point. You're right. I mean, it, it's kind of hard for some of the older guys that have all, you know, been there. And and uh, but I'm, and I'm, I'm so much concerned about what is happening in our, communi- our community. You know, our schools is more of an indoctrination center than, than, than teaching. I, you know, you know I, I was in a conversation teaching a class with one of my children, with my boys, and they were just talking more about you know, hate and systemic racism, which is okay, but teach my boy the ABCs and one, two, three. I, I guess when to me, uh, Jonathan, when I'm in, based on a social setting, I want to. If I'm in a school setting, then I want my child to be educated. If I want, if I'm in a church setting, then I want my child to hear spiritual truths the best possible. I don't need my child indoctrinated. I need him to come into the knowledge of the truth. And I know that's what you're saying, right? Yes. That's exactly what I'm saying. And so, yeah, go ahead. Oh, well, that's what I'm saying. But in this world, you know, truth is in the eyes of the holder. Yeah, that's true. We have to watch. We have to watch who's who's teaching. You know, Uh and what they're teaching, and what they're teaching. You know. Right. And what does that teacher promote? I mean, does the teacher promote violence? You know, we have a lot of people that teach a lot of things that radicalize, you know, our children, that radicalize our community, and that radicalize our thinking to promote violence. Uh, you know, what about teaching that promote unity, that promotes, you know, fathers being good fathers and mothers being good mothers? And, and you're right, that's a good point you made about what is, you know, there's got to be some teaching there. Yeah, we have to watch that because, uh, you know, I believe the machine, this, this, the, the machine, does not want black unity. What I machine the is machine that? Is, the, 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 this American machine does not want black unity. For uh-huh. some reason, for some reason, it's very, very afraid of the black man. Why I don't know, but it doesn't want us to really educate ourselves about ourselves and become family men, you know? It doesn't want the black man in the household. It doesn't want the black man to control his household and to raise his son to be a better person. Uh, That's why there are so many things out there to distract them. You know, there's a lot of distractions in the ghetto. Okay. There there, there are a million distractions in the ghetto. and, and, and you know, if you teach one, 
to do this and you send it there and they think it's cool and they see it on TV and then, you know, now you have a hundred of them doing it. Everybody feels, you know, hey, man, maybe this is my way up. This is my way out. You know, so you have to watch what's being taught. You have to watch what's being said. And this machine has been bamboozling the ghetto, you know, for for a long, long time. And 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 and, and, and until we begin to teach ourselves, uh, uh, uh you know, yeah. we begin to teach ourselves to take care of each other, and we begin to do it, nothing's going to change. Well, you, know? you brought up, a, yeah, you brought up a good point. Yeah, cause when even those who get out of the community, you know, they get out of the community by perpetuating a lifestyle that's not necessarily good for them. You know, we perpetuate a, a you know, rapper lifestyle. You know, I guess what's the singer did, who did this song, WAP, and uh, and so you know, with the knowledge that they had a game, seeing that they should be turning that to our good. Uh, the line is open. If you'd like to call in with a question, make a comment. Our number is one eight six six four five one one four five one. I'm Pastor Ken Jones. Broadcasting to you live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Uh, we're coming back for our final comments, so stay tuned. If you seek a courageous advocate, prepare to champion your rights with consumer service agencies that support aging populations. Carol Ann Hamilton is the one for you. Carol Ann is an elder care coach, author, and speaker with a quarter million hours lived experience successfully supporting unculpable aging parents. As a result of a challenging journey, Carol Ann revolutionizes how stressed out caregivers restore serenity to their worlds. She also brings over 25 years of change management expertise in Fortune 500 settings to catalyze urgent transformation within the elder care industry. Carol Ann is a popular speaker at conferences across North America. She has appeared via TV, radio, and print globally. Now you can tune in weekly to get a dose of her inspiration plus down-to-earth advice to cope with even the most difficult aging parents. Listen Wednesdays at 9 a.m. Eastern on Bold Brave Media and TuneIn Radio. Tune into It's All About You with host Dr. Martha Latz, a lively weekly broadcast on BBM Global Network, one of the most empowering shows for time-starved, overscheduled multitaskers. The professional expertise of Dr. Latz is directly available live every Thursday at 1 p.m. to answer and address concerns about relationships, life transitions of career, meeting, dating, and committed relationships. It's All About You with Dr. Latz will expand your understanding of current and concerns across your relationships by broadening and expanding possible solutions in developing skills for mutually desired outcomes. Dr. Martha's expertise is as a licensed marriage and family therapist, life, transition coach, and all things to do with communication at work, home, and with friends. Check out her website at auniquetherapycenter.com. I'm Pastor Ken Jones, and this is Life Cycle. Come here live in the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. And I want to say thank you to uh, Jonathan for coming on and, and sharing some things, giving us insight that I didn't have because I've never been in a little uh, you know, in the urban community, like I was raised in the South, just kind of giving us insight and understanding, and especially really you know, why we need the gospel and why we need messages of hope in our community. So, John, I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to make some closing thoughts as we get ready to end the show. All right, well, I want to say that, you know, faith is how I began my life believing in something greater than me that, you know, would create create something like him, you know, like God. And as believers in Christ, I believe um, we're not given an option on how we should walk. Uh, But we walk by faith, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, I would like to see more of my brothers come to church and and give themselves to God. Uh, you know, but it's going to take it's 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 going to take more 
it's going to take a miracle, I should say, uh, because of because of it's going to take a definite miracle because of what's going on. You know, we're we're more we're on our phones, this internet thing. Uh, uh, you know, we we put all of this in front of God, the mystery God, because a lot of a lot of brothers don't believe there's a God in the sky. They believe once you're, you're dead and gone, that's it. And yeah. There's no heaven or hell. There's no heaven or hell because you're in hell now. And the only way to get out of it is to figure a way out. And a lot of people think they can. Uh, yeah, I know what you mean. Use drugs, use drugs to, you know, I'm going to sell drugs to get out of this. So I'm going to do this to get out of this. And, uh, you know, I, I would love to think that we can get together and begin to pray about this and let God bring about a change. Okay. Well, thank you, John. Lives, mentally, mentally as well as physically. Yeah. Well, Jonathan, you know, um, Aristes, a guy by the name of Aristes wrote a letter to the Roman emperor, and he talked about a, a group that was heavily oppressed, and they were actually the, the first New Testament Christians. But even in the midst of their oppression, they lived a life that reflected all the teachings of Christ. They love one another. They bond it together. They they uh, work together. They sacrifice for one another. And the reason why I bring this up after we get ready to close is that even in the midst of oppression, a lot of people talk about oppression and certain things that we're going through. Even in the midst of oppression, people still can come together and live the principles of Christ. So thank you for being on our show today. Uh, we look forward to having you back on there again. Uh, I'm Pastor Ken Jones, broadcasting to you live from the BBM Global Networking TuneIn Radio. Look forward to talking to you again next week. So, good night. This has been Life Cycle with your host, Pastor Ken Jones. If you're trying to manage your life cycle, be it with relationships, grief, or marriage, tune in to Pastor Ken Jones' Life Cycle. Listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.